Okay, here we have an SV650. It's been converted over to a GSXR600 fork. Uh, so if you have a 2006 to 2010 GSXR600 or 750, this fork rebuild experience will be basically the same for you. Uh, pretty much any inverted style fork will be like this. Uh, so if you have inverted forks on your bike, this is about the process you would go through. If you have conventional style forks on your bike, go ahead and check the link in the description below. We've done a rebuild on a conventional set of forks there. We'll get started by removing the calipers and then the front wheel, then the front fender, and then the fork tubes themselves. Okay, so we have two eight millimeter hex bolts holding on the front calipers. All right, we'll just slide our caliper out of the way here and use a zip tie to keep that up and out of the way. You don't want to hang it by the hose. Nice and tidy there. And we'll just pull this caliper out of the way as well. We have these four 10 millimeter pinch bolts, uh, two on either side. And we're just going to loosen those up so they stop pinching the axle. On the right side here, we have a 22 millimeter socket, and this is an axle removal tool. Uh, link in the description for this tool. Essentially, it has multiple sizes here for different size bikes. Uh, we can put a socket on the end there, and then utilize the 24 millimeter right there. And then we'll pull our axle out this side. And our axle is free. And so is the front wheel. Then we have six five millimeter hex screws, uh, three at either side. We'll pull that out of the way there. We have two 12 millimeters down here. And then there's one 10 millimeter at the top. And on this bike, there's actually the aftermarket uh, headlight bucket with clamp here. And then the uh, handlebars also have a clamp here. Basically, you want to loosen everything on the forks. And then you can go ahead and slide this fork tube down. And there we have our fork tube. And the same on the other side here. So first we need to remove all the pressure from the preloads. At the top we'll spin this until it seats. Just softly seating there, don't need to crunch it. Uh, it should be about one and three quarter turns uh, from the factory to be one and three quarter turns uh, clockwise in order to get it to seat. And then the Big blue nut here, we're going to spin that counterclockwise, anti-clockwise. Where it was set should be about seven spins. Um, you don't really need to count them presently. It might be a good idea to do so, uh, but we're just going to go counterclockwise until it seats. When we reassemble, we'll put it back to the factory setting of seven. Okay, this would be a really good time to grab a buddy. We have cameraman Kirk coming around to grab a couple tools together. So uh, we're going to remove the very top nut here just below that blue adjuster. All right, we have a 24 millimeter on there and we're gonna use the impact gun to remove it. Perfect. And go ahead and let down the outer tube. And now we have our fork spring compressor. We'll just place that underneath here. Now on the fork spacer here, this uh, plastic shaft, there are a couple of index holes which the fork seal compressing tool uh, indexes into there. And at the top here, when we advance or withdraw this threaded rod, it'll compress or decompress the fork spring. Okay, so we're going to index into that left side and then the right side as well. We'll advance the spacer grab bolt on this side. Nice and firm. You don't need to use a tool to do this, but nice and firm, finger tight should be good. And we'll run this down. Okay. And that's just enough so that we can gain access to this lock nut here. 
So the top nut here is a 17 millimeter and the bottom nut is a 14. We'll just push them toward each other just enough so that that lock nut will spin free. And then this top bit should spin off. And be very careful once you get to the top, you can bring the rod up with it, just like this. There we go. Now we will relieve the spring tension on our spring compressor. And we can remove the bolt holding the spacer. And this kind of has that tapered end to it there. And make sure you keep the fork spring oriented the same direction. There is a top and a bottom to it, so just remember which side was the top. And we'll just dump out the old fork oil here. And you can pump a little bit in order to get the rest of that out. Okay, we can remove the fork tubes from each other. And we'll set aside the lower part here. And we'll use a little tire iron here to carefully remove the dust seal. And down in here is a snap ring. We can just use a pick tool or a screwdriver to remove that. And that leaves the oil seal that we're here to replace. And we'll use a little piece of an old inner tube here, just against the edge of the fork tube, just so we don't damage it. And then we'll use this tire iron again to remove that oil seal. And just gingerly work our way around the circle, prying that loose. There we go. Okay, here's our old oil seal there, and here's the new one. Uh, it's important that you note the direction that this needs to be oriented in. On the back side here, this groove is much wider. And on this direction, this is much fatter material at the top there. This is the way it goes down inside. So this wide side faces upward. And we'll use a little bit of fork oil around the outside here, just to lubricate that on our way in. And we can insert that carefully down inside. We can also put the old oil seal just on top of there. We'll pop that old oil seal off the top. And then if you look down inside here, should be able to see a little bit of a groove at the back there, which allows us to put that snap ring in place. Then we'll put our dust seal on there. Nice and firmly. All right, we'll grab our lower side of the fork and put these two back together. You need to be very cautious of this edge here when it contacts the oil seal. So you just want to go in very easily, nice and slow, rotate around there until it wants to go in. And nice and seated there. Okay, so we have here a Motion Pro branded fork oil level adjuster tool. Uh, essentially there are five millimeter graduated marks along this tool which allow you to control the amount of fork oil. Uh, we're going to set for 107 millimeters below the top edge of the fork here. We are using a five weight down 107 millimeters for this bike. Make sure you uh, develop your own opinions about what weight you want to use or what kind of uh, brand you'd like to select. Okay, we're just going to add some fork oil here. And if you can hear that, as we're adding the oil, there's quite a bit of bubbles coming out. We just want to add until we can sort of see the level come up right about here. Okay, now we need to make sure that the outer sleeve of the fork is all the way down and we don't have the fork spring in there. We're going to grab the metal plunger here, pull it all the way up and keep going up and down through this stroke. And there's still some gurgling and air coming out of the system. So we'll keep going through the full range of motion here trying to pump all of that air out. And you want to develop hydraulic pressure through the full stroke of motion here. It's starting to pump just the fork oil now. I don't hear any more air bubbles. Now we have full hydraulic pressure through that full stroke of the piston. Okay, we have a little bit of fork oil in our syringe here. We'll go ahead and add that to the system. Okay, and now we have 
enough fork oil that it goes beyond this tube. And in order to get the exact measurement, we just draw back up on the fork oil until we draw air. And that's how we know that this straw is exactly 107 millimeters below the surface of the fork tube. Now that we have the right amount of oil in there, we'll add our spring back. In order to do that, we can pull this plunger up, hold it there, add the spring, and quickly drop the spring so you can grab this. Otherwise, you won't be able to reach down in to get it. We need to add a zip tie to the top of this plunger rod here, just so we can pull it through the spacer. We'll just add a zip tie to the top here. And we'll also add the spacer cap. Now we need to use the spring compressor tool in order to draw that spacer down and then we can reattach the top of the rod. Once again we'll add that spacer grab bolt onto the top there and we can run down the spring compressor. We'll use the zip tie to draw that rod up and that'll rest nicely right there and we'll put our rod back down the middle We'll just run that down snugly. You don't want to torque it down. You just need to run it till it seats gently like that. And then we'll bring our lock nut upward. And then we'll gently seat these two nuts together there. Then we'll cut the zip tie. And that'll go back down in. Then we'll remove the spring compression. And remove the spacer bolt. Then we can put the cap back on. And that is a 24 millimeter. And then we can reset the preload. Okay, with a 19 millimeter, we want to go all the way counterclockwise, anti-clockwise, till gently seated. And then it's seven turns to the recommended adjustment. So it's seven spins clockwise for the blue adjuster there and then at the top this preload adjustment we want to gently seat going clockwise and then back anti-clockwise counterclockwise one and three quarter spins okay so we have our nicely rebuilt forks here we have the fresh oil seals and good fork oil in there uh, again make sure you double check what the spec should be for fork oil weight and quantity in your forks um, these were 107 millimeters as mentioned we'll proceed with reassembly here Okay, we've got our forks back together there, brakes and everything reassembled, looks really nice. Uh, there'll be a little bit of seepage most likely at a fresh oil seal, uh, probably for the first 100 miles you just want to double check that surface. If you get a lot of leakage, uh, certainly that needs to be corrected, but there'll be just a little bit of fine oil coming out of there uh, for the first 100 miles or so while everything beds in. Uh, but that should be everything for a fork rebuild on an inverted set of forks just like this. Certainly check the links in the description below. We have a set of conventional forks being rebuilt and a lot of other repair videos coming. Uh, we certainly appreciate you watching and we'll catch you on the next one. In any case, I'm Miles. You're extraordinary. We'll see you later. This video is sponsored by the Ford Windstar. Oh.